Good afternoon. My name is Tom. I come to you from the rustic log cabin in northern Maine. Welcome to my cabin. Get yourself a cup of coffee. <laughs> It's breakfast time. I won't sit here and eat the whole thing in front of you because I want to enjoy my breakfast. But the name of this video is Camp Therapy. <laughs> I have got a long time subscriber of this channel. Uh, he knew I'd been sick for the last three weeks and he kept telling me, you need some camp therapy. Well, we got to put some pepper on this camp therapy. I got deer steaks this morning, home fries, and three eggs. That seems like pretty good camp therapy to me. I need a hearty breakfast today because I'm going out to move a couple feet of snow, get some firewood, make some kindling, <laughs> getting, getting everything caught up for winter. I usually get up here three weeks ago, get everything squared away for uh, winter, you know, getting ready for ice fishing and snowmobiling and all that good stuff that goes along with it. But boy, I got sick right after deer season, so kind of put me under the weather. Well, that's pretty good. We got a beagle down here who wants a bite. Oh, excellent. The deer meat always tastes a little better when it's cooked at the cabin. Gotta give the dog a bite. Kind of letting it warm up out there a little bit. Maybe the tractor will start a little easier. But you know, while we're here, we could have a little bit of a discussion too, you know. I like to share. Because just because I don't watch the news doesn't mean I'm not keeping up. I don't watch the news because I can't trust it. Uh, you can't trust the media at all. If you think you can, you're, you're, you're living under a rock. And the reason I tell you that is I've been watching the weather my whole life. Are we going to have to make some changes to live with a couple of degrees temperature difference? Of course. But they're talking about raising the thermometer two degrees over the next hundred years. So that's a hundred years for mankind to adapt. It doesn't have to be adapted right now. 
not affecting us. You know, if you listen to Al Gore back then, he said that with the polar ice caps melting, we we're all going to be underwater. Well, what a bow faced lie that was. Are you underwater? Of course you're not underwater. And anybody that tells you you are, they're smoking dope and uh, thinking with the thinking out there. Let's talk about rain. You know, a lot of people don't pay attention to things, but I do. Let's talk about rain. We've been getting drier and drier summers here in the state of Maine for quite some time now. Like this summer. This summer was a dry summer. Beaver Creek over there, it's in a swamp. There wasn't very much water. So let's talk about what creates rain. Most of you think rain just falls out of the sky and that's it. It's going to be a rainy day. That's not true. In order for a raindrop to make, it needs a piece of dust. Condensation will form around that piece of dust and that's what creates a raindrop. So let's let's think about this. We've been working our heinies off, making the atmosphere cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. <laughs> no dust, no raindrop, we have a drought. That's just about how simple it is. And as far as uh, over that course of that hundred years, they don't know that. Just like with this virus we just had to deal with. How much of that now has been proven to be a bull-faced lie? Hmm? Something to think about. See, when I get camp therapy, <laughs> I sit down and start thinking about these things. I got nothing else to think about, so <laughs> blame it on Doug! But let's talk about, you know, cold. What do you think caused the ice age? <laughs> if we weren't here. takes is one massive volcano to block the sun out for one season. That's what it takes. That hasn't happened in a long time, but it used to happen all the time. Probably, I guess, when the earth was first forming, who knows, I'm not that deep into it. But that's what it takes to create cold weather. So now you got all these clean people. What about when this country used to burn coal? And the sky was black from burning coal. They weren't crying about global warming then. I'm not knocking burning coal. Because I think we need a little bit of a dirty atmosphere. What I think is going on is 
But just some people are going to make a lot of money. If they can get this country to go in a different direction. And the whole world. If you can get the whole world to go in a different direction. I think that there's, a, I think there's some people going to make a lot of money. It's already started. Ford is switching over to these electric vehicles and trucks and everything else. Do you really think that's the answer? Because I don't. I think we're a long ways from the answer. I watched a video this week on uh, Toyota the company Toyota and they say the same thing we're not ready for electric vehicles I mean not at all uh, especially some of the other places in the world so so they're going both ways they're they're pumping out some electric vehicles but they're also pumping out some regular vehicles because they believe that we're 50 years away from what everybody wants right now what they're trying to convince you of is electric, electric, electric. I can tell you right now, state of Maine is a big state. There's not going to be electric uh, charging stations within 12 miles of this cabin. <laughs> so, you know, take it for what it is. And you're the same way. We're just a long ways from that technology. So I think Toyota's probably got it just about right. Uh, anybody with any common sense, anyways, would think that way. And if you think electric vehicles are the answer, then you're living in a city or you're living in a wherever, and you don't travel very much for your job or for your whatever. But the rest of the country, uh, we're not willing to live in that filth, crime-infested city that you see on the news 24-7. Uh, you know, there's a big part of this country that wants to live free, wants to live not afraid, wants to know that uh, the drugs aren't being sold at the end of the driveway down there. And if they are, I know about it. And I can go down and take care of it. You know, there's not a criminal under behind every tree here. So some of us want to live a little more normal life than what people that dwell in the cities want, I suppose. And I say that because you'd be doing something about it. If you didn't mind living that way, you'd be doing something about it. You'd make sure that that drug dealer on the end of the road wasn't comfortable. Now it might be hard to do now. You let him go for so long. But these are the things we need to change. We don't need to, you know, people are going to be cold this winter because of foolishness. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to me. This video all over the place was because I got a lot of thoughts in my mind this morning. And it's basically because when I come to this cabin, life here is simple. I have solar panels on my top of my woodshed that supply five batteries with all the electricity that I need. I have enough food here to stay for God knows how long. It's all it's all dry food and stuff like that. And plus I've got my I've got my shotgun here with me. I've got a 22 here with me. Uh, you don't have to go very far and you find you find rabbits and you find all kinds of stuff. Uh, but life here is pretty simple. 
And I really think that that's the way life is supposed to be lived. That's why I say that about the cities and electric vehicles and all that. It might work for you, but it's not going to work for everybody. And I really think that there's some people that are only pushing this because they're going to get rich. They're going to get rich. They're not pushing it for your well-being. Back in the 70s, they were complaining about global freezing. Now they're complaining about global warming. What does that tell you? I feel bad. You know, my generation got a pretty good handle on the way life is supposed to be. And I feel bad for uh, the younger generation that hasn't seen it or been around it. Anyway, this steak's good this morning. <laughs> Have a cup of coffee with me. And I will see you next time.